All right. Hello, everybody. How's it going out there? Welcome to another edition of Tough Talk. Uh, I've actually done two shows in one night. This is like a first for me. So I <laughs> uh, want to uh, have you guys help me welcome a local band who I've had the honor and privilege of slowly getting to know. But I actually heard these guys a few years back um at an event and uh the incredible sound of just these three guys uh just really fascinated me so i had a talk with uh, a couple of them afterwards and uh, we had some good good chats but please welcome fed up and that's f-e-d-d up <laughs> <laughs> it is you got it right <laughs> Hey, How's guys. it going? Hey, welcome to the show. Uh, appreciate you uh, taking your time uh, from your busy schedules and just uh, getting together. The point of this tonight is uh, to have my viewers get to know your band, uh, what you guys are all about, and I'm just going to ask you guys some general questions. So uh, let's first start with introducing your guys' selves. So uh, we'll start with uh, Nick. Yeah, I'm Nick Alvis. I play the bass. Okay. And I'm Jake Smith. I play guitar. I'm Dirk Chris, and I play the drums. <laughs> all yeah. right. Yeah. And we're all a bunch of goofballs. We've been goofing, <laughs> goofing off here, uh, trying to get things ready for the stream tonight. So uh, it took a little bit of time, a little, bit, a little longer than I had actually anticipated. So, um, so I guess the the biggest thing I wanted to ask you guys uh, since the pandemic, you know, hit. Uh, the past couple years how many shows have you guys been able to do um i mean we we did 2020 we actually snuck a show in it was uh it was a benefit concert it was pretty much a, a nice little hippie fest uh sometime towards the end of the year but i mean man once 2021 kicked back up i mean it, it was kind of you know people reaching out whether they're bands or, or venue owners or friends you know but a after all that it, it really took off but during 2020, I think we actually got one show in. Yes. Yeah. Then, then we worked yeah, on a, yeah, started looking at live streams and, you know, that, that type oh, of stuff yeah. that kind of changes it. But yeah, after that, it, it was kind of <laughs> all, all forward after that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, do you guys find it difficult now to get into places or are you guys like looking for shows or? Yes. Yes. <laughs> no, actually, I don't, I don't, yes. I don't yes. I mean, I mean, the way the way we are now. I mean, with uh, with a band, you know, we kind of have different focuses at different times. And and right now, we're saying, you know, we're we're not actively looking for shows. You know, if we have any that come up on us, we have a couple booked right now. But our main focus um, is actually recording and writing right now. The double album. The gotcha. double album. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no. Oh, cool. But. Yeah, um, right. But no, no, don't get me wrong. We're still playing shows. We still want to get out there. We still want to have fun. We want to jam with people. You know, that's part of why we do this. Um, but the root of why we do this is we love making music. So we're actually sure. shifting a focus right now back to the roots. We're going back to the back to the practice studio and sitting down and trying to focus on that writing and recording. But sh shows come. Right, yeah. right like like everything else so and of course you guys all have full-time jobs i'm assuming too yeah right yeah. right yeah so yeah this is our hobby yeah, slash part-time job project. slash yeah. passion pro yeah yeah it has many names <laughs> right right exactly so i mean i got a full-time job so you know i i do the other stuff on the side as as you can so uh how right. many shows you guys have lined up for the summer what's left of it anyways uh, two and three two or three in it yeah we have um we actually have a, a graduation party coming up at the eagles here in lancaster that is at the end of july cool. yep yep you got it it's the last friday i think it's the 29th um but we're at the eagles here it's the 1980 burn union <laughs> graduation oh is it lancaster oh i was wrong oh but it's a class of 80 i got that right but no we have that show coming up we're actually doing a, a show down in sugar grove somewhere on a sunday in Laurelville, yeah. um, but then we have one more show, um, so three in total. Then we're going to finish out our uh, year with the Ale House again downtown in Lancaster, and that's the last Saturday, I think, um, in August. So we have three more shows for us this year. Okay, and then what Which do you guys do like after? <laughs> so all your shows are 
mainly through the summer months. Uh, yes. Do you guys do any through the winter, or is that the time that you guys get together and do your uh, music no, and you, uh, recording? We prefer to write music instead of carry equipment yeah, in the cold. Because, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, <laughs> we don't get it wrong. Gotta be honest. Yeah. 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 But things can slow down, and things that just—I mean—it just tends to get messy in the winter time. So we just usually just say. You know, cut it off until right. the, but if somebody reaches out to us, mm-hmm. we'll play. We yeah. essentially hibernate. You know, we go back to our little cozy place, our with our instruments, and we hang out and we just we just play music, man. And, yeah. and that's uh, it's it's a good reprieve from the uh, I guess you want to call it the show season, so to say. Not that we're, you know, just labor intensive and we're doing shows every weekend or anything, yeah. but um, it takes a lot to get show ready, you know, and and bring out those new songs you right. know, or uh, finish that stuff. And, and when you're getting show ready, you're not necessarily sitting down writing and recording. So, and we shift focus. It's it's that ebb and flow, you know, it's it's always that balance, but winter's a good time to hibernate. Yeah. yeah. Recoup. Yeah. And these guys, uh, you know, like myself, we have a lot in common as far as uh, you guys definitely have a genre of rock. Uh, you like to do uh, cover tracks as well, but you also write your own original stuff. So, uh, tell tell everybody just a little bit about uh, the style of music that you guys uh, compose. Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, like m- most of most of the songs just come from general ideas like that anybody could have, and they just they just bring them out, and then typically like a riff or maybe like a, a a full idea, and then it's just it's a jam thing. It's a thing where everyone gets their DNA in it, and then when the DNA's there then things start to happen in terms of lyrics, in terms of stuff like that. And then, and then we just get like a final product and we just record it. So, yeah. yeah. And it's, you know, we work through that and it's like, oh, this one's heavy. Oh, this one's light. Oh, this one's kind of poppy. This one's kind of rock. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's just, it, th- these are just random ideas and just whatever fits and whatever we like, we keep going with. But um, we, we've been considered a, uh, what was it? A modern twist on classic rock. I heard that through... Um, I can't remember now. Um, CD1025 said something along those lines. Vinyl Frontier said something several years back about that when we released our Dark Days EP. So I kind of held on to that. I, I think that's a good classification for us. We're a little rock and roll. We're a little modern twist. Okay, what do you cool. think, Dirk? Cool. Um, now, are you three, the original three of the band, or how, how, did, how did that go about? Oh, well, I'm the original and then Jake, <laughs> then Jake that's came true. along. It, it um, it it, it was a, a long time ago. It was me. It was my dad, and uh, another bass player, and they asked me to to come along because I was like a you know like a Klingon and all that to um, to record their session. And well, at the time, I mean, I'm not saying like ancient or old or anything, but it was a, it was like a it was like a four track cassette tape that I had two microphones taped to the roof <laughs> to, to record them. It was like 13 and years ago. We all and my dad somewhere. was like, well, just just come up, and do it. just come up and play, play, play the song. And, and it, you know, and he was like, well, that's fucking, you know, yeah, that sounds really good, you know, and then it just kind of like I incorporated into it. And then um, but me, me and Nick have been playing music for Jesus, God, like before fed up even came to fruition so then later, almost he got half our life now yeah and then it was just full full steam ahead yeah Sorry, really I gotta get close. and and also dirk and jake played in some stuff beforehand and kind of melded into fed up as you know musicians intermingle into other bands you know how that goes until you get something permanent kind of like what we've you know, created here. Right. But until that point, you know, you kind of go around and find what you can find. But um, I stepped in as a rhythm guitarist actually first. I'm a drummer yeah. at heart. Yeah, I know. I used to play rhythm, right? But no, I'm a drummer. <laughs> like, I came in as a rhythm guitarist. Then we got a new bass player. And then we went down to a three piece. And we've been this three piece setup where uh, I'm on bass now since it's been five years. 2017 is when we went down to a three piece. Okay. And uh, but Fed Up really started back in earliest, what, 2010? Jam, jamming at Roxy's Pizza and whatnot yeah. and bonfires <laughs> <The basement, yeah. laughs> before another basement, but before I was uh, in this mm-hmm. band. But yeah, yeah, we've been around for about twelve years, and this current lineup has been together for about five. Okay, cool. And I think I saw you guys down at the Eagles. Um, that was back in twenty eighteen, I believe. Correct me if yes. I'm wrong. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the red, white, and brew. Um, yes. That was a charity for the Harkham House. Man, that was a great oh, gig. We actually got recurring on that. We we got to play the second year, but um. The third year was actually uh, 
2020. Yeah, we played 18 and we played 19, but then 2020 happened and they kind of killed the fundraiser. But I heard they were thinking about to bring it back up. I need to poke around on that a little bit more. But that was a really cool show for a really cool cause. Yeah, there was, uh, I think, what, three or four bands there, I believe? That yeah, yeah, we... Yeah, uh, back in 18, I think both nights, but back in 18, we had about three or four bands. I think we were pretty close to the beginning. Bad Influence was the headliner then. Right. They ran the sound for us, Bob and all them cool cats. Robert. But yeah, Robert Influence. <laughs> but no, a lot, some other local, mu- <laughs> we call him Bob Influence, but um, his name's Bob. He plays in Bad Influence. He's a really cool guy, really cool local guy, great local. Band. But no, 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 they headlined that year. And oh, man, that was a good time. Right, right. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, so, Dirk, let's start with you. Uh, how long have you played drums? Have you played it all your life? Uh, oh, I started boy. when I was about 18 years old. start old. counting. <laughs> 1948. <laughs> In 19, 19, I started about uh, 1979. I started playing drums. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. I would have been three years old. Holy hell. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even hear. He's seen a thing or two. Yeah, I've seen a couple things. Like, yeah. We just us three just get together and we click and it just works so 19 so here we go. Yeah. and it's fun yeah and i know nick likes to uh tease on the drums you know drummers and stuff like that uh i've seen some of his comments that he likes to throw out there so <laughs> oh yeah uh, so shame <laughs> on you nick shame on you that wasn't bro. me <laughs> it'd be all right <laughs> um it was yeah that's awesome uh yeah i i actually uh it's kind of a funny story my grandfather bought me my first uh drum kit he actually got it at a garage sale and uh so i started playing in junior high and i self-taught my you know myself and uh unfortunately I wasn't a right-handed drummer at the time. I was a left-handed drummer. So. Oh, open face. That's going to help you so much, though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, so, I wish I could move Did like you have that. to move the hi-hat all the way to the other that, side? Yes, I, I sure did. My, <laughs> Dude, my snare sweet. was on the right. Uh, I played the kick with my left. And, oh, my goodness. Uh, I actually did a video tutorial so you guys can see my electronic kit and how it's set up now on my channel. Okay. But, uh, you guys have to oh. check out that video some other time. But... Anyways. We were messing around with electronic drum kits the other uh, week or two, or yeah, oh, geez, yeah. like last month. Yeah, that's cool, man. I'd love to see that. Yeah, it's a it's a Lisus DM10, uh, which Dirk probably okay. has heard. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. So it's a it's a sweet sweet setup, and uh, basically all my cymbals and bride is still left. Um, the hi hat is of course the right way, but yeah, all my toms <laughs> go now the right way, and then my cymbals are all left. So I still oh, do yeah. left and right. So it's kind of crazy. Uh, nice. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Jake? When did you start playing guitar? When he was born. Um, <laughs> right out of the womb. <laughs> like, I'd say he's about eight or nine years old. Um, when when I when I started and thought I wanted to do it, I mean, like, <clears throat> I was kind of born into it because my dad did it, and so like I emulated off of him when I was real young, and um, it, it was about eight years old, and then it, I was upstairs with him like like at this uh it was actually a place off 159 here in Lancaster and I started oh, yeah. doing chords and I started to uh change chords and he would teach me how to change chords but yeah he he like you know assimilated me into like I guess rock culture and stuff like that I mean in terms of like musicality but yeah it was probably about eight years old and then I just I just took it from there and I just tried to uh push it and to have as much fun as possible with it as I kept going oh cool all right yeah right on uh, and Nick, when did you start playing the bass? Um, oh, geez. You've always been well, a drummer, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, we I didn't start playing. Fun the... of drummers. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, no. Actually, I started playing <laughs> drums when I was about 15. And then when I was 15, 16 is actually when I first met Jake. And it just kept going. But my grandma was a drummer. She used to play in a, a Alvis family gospel band. Uh, oh, nice. No fees. I actually I have the magnet on my fridge still up there. Yeah. <laughs> old grandma uh rest her soul, Grandma Alvis, my old Catholic grandma. But um she had um just she played her brothers, her big Catholic family, all the brothers and sisters played. Uh my uncle still plays drum, my dad used to play bass, he kind of gave it up. Um, uh, but it, you know, just kind of the Alvis family just kind of all play music. I didn't really find out until I was in high school. I mean, <laughs> I was just like, Oh wow. What? Right, right. Um, but no, my, uh, my grandma, and my uncle got me a drum set when I was 15 and it took off, but, um, I moved away to college when I was, uh, 18 and I just didn't have anyone to play with, you know? So playing drums by yourself is kind of boring. So I started, you know, I, when I was 
16, 17, I taught myself guitar a little, piano a little, you know, just just all self-taught the same. I think all of us are all self-taught and we all play more than one instrument at least. Um, but then I moved into, uh, you know, playing by myself in college. So I was like, all right, I got to get better at the guitar, you know, or, I, or this band opened up and they need a bass player. All right. And I think that was uh, a band called First Avenue when I was in college. They needed a bass player and I just went, okay, I guess I'm going to start playing bass. And I seen him years later, yeah. <laughs> and he he reminded me like, it, it, dark days. He was doing rhythm on that, and and the rhythm oh, was yeah, so right. good and so solid. And what he did, it reminded me like Paul Stanley. It was just like right in the pocket <laughs> the whole nice. time. And it was it was. It, it's very good. It and, was it was very solid. It and actually, up. to know, I was a rhythm guitarist on our Dark Days EP and our Two on the G single. Anything past that, I, I was on the base. And if he disappears, he said, you know when I'm here, but when I'm gone, you'll know it too. Yeah. <laughs> and it is. It is. It, yeah. It's not the not the space you fill. It's the space you leave that right. people listen to. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's my base theory. I learned that from uh, <laughs> Roger Waters and somebody else said it. I think Eric Clapton or somebody said it too. Oh, yeah, yeah, Clapton. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, something. That's yeah. awesome. Um, and Dirk can probably – contest with me on this so we're just there for the beat mainly uh, you know being drummers <laughs> so we don't do a whole lot of writing so who all composes yeah, when do. you guys do the original yeah. writing do you guys all do it and oh, oh we'll get that? you here <laughs> but, but see, and that's what's so cool about the, this group is that everyone everyone does does write and and, okay. and he writes on the yeah. drums too and i just wish we could set him up like um night ranger where he oh, was yeah. just on the oh, side and could sing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we've, no. we've done, we've thought about that at yeah. least or but did like, it a practice. Right. <laughs> everything we do is through everybody in the band. Okay. And, and, and because I found it, it, it's just so boring if you don't do that. In my yeah. opinion, I don't want to be, I, I want to have someone say, let's do this. And it's like, okay, cool. Yeah. And watch people spread their wings, and it's just incredible. Yeah. It's just like, and a big part of our repertoire is really a bunch of uh, Dirk songs that he's had over the years, and we just, you know, made a fed up version of yeah. it. I mean, awesome, yeah, yeah, that, that's cool. I know, Dirk sits uh, down on the bass and writes them, and yeah. or, or uh, say Jake will bring them to us. And I know a couple of them that I, you know, created the wrist, and then we just run with. But really, all of us come to each other at practice with like a ten second idea and maybe like a second leg of the song and then all of a sudden there's a structure there they, and then everybody starts throwing in ideas but i always say uh jake's kind of our spark you know uh averagely i'm kind of the firewood that keeps it going and then dirk's just fucking gasoline you throw right on top of it. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's like a song you know that, that's our fire, fire. right yeah <laughs> it's definitely a three-man effort and we always give you know besides lyrics because we we kind of specify lyrics and who wrote them and whatnot but every single song that we've ever released and probably will continue we say written and composed by all three members for sure right okay well that's awesome uh now, you, now do you guys ever like when you do your cover tracks and stuff like that obviously you sing the same lyrics and stuff but when you actually post your stuff to youtube or whatever do you guys ever get a copyright uh claim yeah i mean facebook's actually a lot worse than um youtube has been but facebook kind of went on a spike of stuff and uh because i'll upload to youtube and facebook separately i'm not I, i'm a little tech savvy but i'm just not social media savvy so we just kind of shotgun approach you know so to what i know um youtube we really don't get too big of a problem i always put like you know uh, like some kind of wonderful cover fed up as the grand, you know, funk railroad or whatever, right. you know, I always, I try to limit it or try to really specify it, but I'd say it's about 20, 30% of our videos get flagged and they just kind of sit there and sometimes they go away. Actually. I, I, I've seen a couple on Facebook that came and went, yeah. but we have a little trouble with that uploading. Well, and I, I, I basically face the same thing. Cause unfortunately when I do my, my cover songs, I try to get it as close to the original as I can when I do it. Um, and that's not my fault. That's because of the sheet music that I use <laughs> when I when I uh -oh. download it, you know. And then I try yeah. to get the drum style. I try to change the drums up a little bit, maybe throw in an extra beat or something like that. And it feels, sometimes yeah. it will avoid that copyright claim. So. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, just that's, a little extra kick, just to well, get them off your. Right, right. Them off it's your, that, right. that itty bitty yeah. ting. It's a well, whole different I, I song. Every <laughs> doing the vanilla ice on the drums. Yeah. Just oh a bit. yeah. Fed up ways. It's we not under pressure. Our cover. But you oh can't yeah, have it yeah. Not to. yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, you can't help but not to do do because right. we're do just a rock. Yeah, we're right. just a rock band playing it live, so it just comes out the way it come that we can do it. You know, we're not going to hit it like Sting or freaking Elton. You know, yeah. we hit it how well, we yeah. do. Well, like, Hopefully in tune, finger, and it's which different. We do. I mean, like Sting will do it at a. I think it's like at a A or G for wrapped around your thing but we do yeah. it out of like f sharp yeah and that's yeah. just because i can't sing that high and neither can he anymore <laughs> yeah we don't uh, we don't play half step down we do play 440 standard still i might change over the years we'll see but uh, <laughs> yeah sometimes <laughs> you sometimes you gotta change the key of it but yeah, um and i'm facing the same our own. thing i mean i'm 45 years old now guys and <laughs> let's face it i can't hit those high notes anymore like i used to be able to so uh, and it, it kind of pisses you off because you're just like damn it i gotta change the the freaking key <laughs> So right, um, but yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, I, yeah. I, I totally understand that. So, and I, I actually had a channel on Facebook uh, way back when, and I stopped using it because Facebook got to the point where it started muting out part of my track, and I'm just like, well, this is shit. Oh yeah, I was like, nobody can even listen to it and even watch it if you're gonna mute out part of my track. So right. it's like whatever. So um, I'm gonna play. Real quick, you guys can go ahead and mute your mics for just a moment. Just kind of watch the TV screen there. I'm going to play oh, for yeah. the viewers uh, just some of your, uh, well, it's actually a couple of songs, really. One of them is a cover track that you guys did. And then the second one uh, is actually one of my favorites that I heard you guys play in 2018, Wildflower. So, uh, All right on. So, Off the dark days. The yeah, dark so days. basically I took uh, I took these two clips. I kind of took out some of the stuff where you guys were talking in the beginning of it, but I just got, oh, yeah, <laughs> just got, <laughs> just got where you guys are actually playing and stuff, but I want the viewers to be able to check this out. Uh, so you guys just bear with me. I think it's about a, uh, eight or nine minute video. So, uh, let me pull it up here and make sure everything is good. And then I'm going to mute my mic until it's over. All right.
Some kind of wonderful, yeah, she is, baby. Some kind of wonderful, yeah. Some kind of wonderful, yeah.
All right, you guys just got a taste of Fed Up live and in your face. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 Is that who that was? Yeah. So where'd you guys do that recording at? That was actually up in um, Heath, Buckeye Lake area. It's this okay. uh, place called Garage Bands Live. Man, it's, it's a super cool setup. They're really cool guys, easy to work with. I highly recommend it. All you have to do is apply on their website. Um, I, I don't know it off the top of my head, but Garage Bands, one word, live. And you just walk in. They completely take care of everything, set up all the sound. We actually went back there. That was from November of last year. And we were there April, right? The end of April yeah. this year. And we got a couple videos up from that. But, yeah, man, it was an absolute blast. What do you guys think? Oh, yeah. Oh, God, awesome. yeah. Dude, they yeah, were so I mean, fun. Those cats, <laughs> they're so ahead of the game. Oh, my like, God, yeah. They were experimenting. They had, like, this um, stabilizer that they pulled back. And like they showed me a video of it, and I'm like, oh my god, it's incredible! Oh, they're what talking about all the projects they're working yeah. on. Yeah, they're they're smart dudes. And then yeah. they wanted to do um, a VR experience where like they could put us in like uh, the Greek Colosseum or the Pantheon or something like that. Oh, nice! And they could just yeah, and they could just be, well like because I asked them, I was like, what well, do you think you could do like the Royal Albert Hall, like where like Cream played and stuff <laughs> like that? And oh yeah, yeah, we could do it. Yeah, yeah. And they could do it three dimensionally. Oh, nice! No With, like green a crowd or nothing, huh? Yeah. See, well, green screen and other cameras, but yeah, they got okay. the whole video set up, audio set up. Yeah, bunch of cool guys, man. They they have a sweet setup up yeah. there. Oh, I definitely awesome. recommend bands around here to apply to it. And like, put me at Pompeii with Pink Floyd and all yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, you guys mentioned uh, like uh, virtual reality and stuff. Have you guys ever been to Chilla Coffee? There is a gamer place down there, and my wife. Okay, oh, really? my wife is not into games at yeah. all. Uh, she mm -hmm. played Mario with me maybe occasionally, but <laughs> that's very seldom. <laughs> but anyway, there there's a place down in Chillicothe. I can't remember the name of it. I'd have to look it up and let you guys know. But you go in there, and it's virtual reality. You put on the goggles and stuff, and you're literally oh, – cool. it's kind of like an escape room. You guys know about the escape rooms and stuff. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So this is basically the same thing, except you're playing in a video game, and you're trying to escape. The one that we did was like at a pyramid. It reminded me of Indiana Jones. So you're oh, trying yes. to find your way out, and you're literally like uh, looking for clues. You're looking for places to climb, and you're literally mm -hmm. like taking your arms and and of course I'm holding my tablet in my hand, but you're taking <laughs> your arms and you're trying to reach and and get get out of this freaking uh, pyramid. So it was like amazing. Like I've never done anything or experienced anything like that. You know where you're trying oh, to escape really something. Cool. So you guys will have to check it out because I know you know you're local and. It, that's true. Not that far away, but uh, oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Right. Really yeah. Cool. That's what we're doing next Sunday, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're doing, yeah, yeah, we're on it. <laughs> we're to get, I mean, that's I mean, that's where the video games are going, isn't it? I mean, it's like right. now we just like drop people into like uh, Skyrim 3D yeah. or like <laughs> have them run on a big ball yeah. like a hamster, you know, <laughs> like, a little bit of water on the side. Just Dark can't Souls see 3D. Yeah. I mean, that would be incredible, right? Like Dark Souls 3 3D. It'd be in, it'd be incredible. Right, right, yeah. I, it 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 was amazing, I, and that was the first time I've ever experienced anything like that. So it was just really cool. Um, mm -hmm. I had something on the top of my head, and I just totally lost it. I hate when that happens. So what? Uh, <laughs> yeah, see, I I used to when I actually started these podcasts at the beginning of the year, I had a script, and I would read off the script. But uh, now I just come up with all the stuff off the top of my head. But uh, freestyle. Uh, Yes, exactly. I feel like that's that's the best way to actually do it is just freestyle it. So, uh, do you guys have any plans of uh, what's your next album going to be? So, I mean, well, we just released. Um, we finally moved into the basement. We're doing, you know, all home productions. We're doing recording, mixing, mastering to what we know, teaching ourselves stuff. So we're all in house now. Um, that includes, you know, all of our promos and everything. You know, it's not that we want that way, but <laughs> we make it work. <laughs> you know, right. so if you're a promoter, let us know. We're looking. But uh, <laughs> but no, we do everything in-house now. We actually released, last year we released, what was it, Dog Called Dead. That was an EP of five songs. That was our freshman release from here. Then we did Good Enough later that year, um, our single, um, sophomore release from here. And then we did our Garage Bands live album the same year. Actually, that was all three released in the same year. That was last year. Yeah, we were busy. Yeah. Um, but then we followed that up this year with FOMO Cheesemo. That's a four-track EP, and that's our third release from the basement. But, spoiler, our uh, fourth release is actually we're working on a single right now. 
and then we have further plans. Yeah. Um, double album. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, double yeah. album. <laughs> uh, you guys got a compliment uh, on the chat. So Relics is a gaming friend of mine who I just had on a show before you guys uh, this evening. He says you guys killed it. So really enjoyed your guys' uh, music videos there. Well, so appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. thanks for reaching out, man. Uh, thanks for watching. And you guys, uh, I know some of you may not have Facebook or whatever, but they do have a, a Facebook site. You guys also have a, a website too, right? You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, actually, it's like a little free site. Um, we used Wix. I just, you know, I'm, I'm tight ass, so I don't want to pay for anything. But um, <laughs> very familiar they, with Wix. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, something along the lines of, um, geez, let me think. Fed up dot Wix site dot com slash band. <laughs> and that isn't that easy to go to like but um yeah. but no what it does is it really leads you it just kind of gives you a little history on the band it's mobile it's it's on the desktop but it, it really just kind of a hub instead of saying hey our facebook has this link everywhere you know our youtube has this links everywhere but you know just that website's kind of the central location to see right. you know a little bit of info no pictures we tell you to go to our facebook for our schedule unfortunately it's so Sure. updating you know you have to kind of follow facebook there but yeah we have links to videos links to our music links to our shop we have a threadless store as well um, but yeah we got a bunch of online platforms including soundcloud bandcamp we're on spotify as well itunes bandcamp? apple music that one yeah yeah bandcamp? absolutely <laughs> yeah <laughs> doing the yeah. filters <laughs> many years at bandcamp right yeah <laughs> but no and actually um a little insider tip is all of our music is available for free downloading or for free streaming so if anyone even goes to look at it they can have it for free man so on any of those websites they can get all of our stuff Cool. And of course, you guys are on YouTube, which is the whole point of me doing this show with you guys tonight. Um, you guys all have, I think, 63 followers or subscribers right now. So right if you guys on. are interested in Love more it. of their content and you want to check out other songs that they have actually produced uh, or even done cover tracks for, uh, you guys go to YouTube and it is F E D D up. So fed up. Check them out, like and subscribe, and ding that bell so you guys can follow all their stuff on there as well. So I'm sure they yeah, we really have appreciate names it. For them. Yeah, we have live videos, we have promo videos, we have you know official audios <laughs> of yeah. our MP3s and releases and whatnot. Heck, heck yeah, follow us. Yeah, yeah, be sure to follow them. And like I said, that's the reason why I was doing this tonight because I want to get as many people over to you guys as possible. Uh, I've definitely enjoyed your guys' content, and it's just great stuff. So uh, the other question I had for you guys um, is basically, have you ever had a keyboard player in the band? <laughs> oh, my God. That is so fucking cool. <laughs> that is the coolest shit. Because I've always said, I was like, I, I, well, like, because I, I would always say, well, maybe another guitar player or something like that to fill the sound. And then I said, like, what about a keyboard player or something like that? <laughs> just for the, playing the, playing the, back when we were four piece yeah keyboard yeah keyboard yeah, keyboard yeah. Keyboard. and we did yeah. yeah yeah but like i was all about the um like the pink floyd setup which was like one like, guitar one bass one keyboard one drummer which right. i thought was we had like was a really 40 dollar casio that you put behind your head <laughs> and play and fall on the floor with yeah. we had a couple songs yeah. that jake played keys too that is so funny oh, that, yeah. that is so funny you said that you got anybody who wants to wants to do keys you know key player? Yeah. <laughs> well what a i do player. my own keys but uh <laughs> i just mm -hmm. at this time until all my kids are actually gone and we are empty nesters <laughs> it's going to be mm -hmm. rather difficult for me to do that so that's why i've actually hey. done the stuff on my own <laughs> for now um but i tell you my all-time favorite cover track that i've ever done and, it, and it's just because of the keyboards and the beginning of the song you guys know the song know what the hell i'm talking about is white snake here i go again so yeah I well had, i mean i mean that's oh, just yeah. a fucking yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's I, just, I had a blast doing that song and i i just love the piano at the beginning i kind of tied in the old uh lp version with the radio version when i did my cover so it just turned out mm -hmm. great and I, I was so excited about it but now i'm like at the point where i want to go back and redo it so I'm yeah. gonna, i gonna kind of add in some backup vocals and stuff oh, um, nice. and, and just figure out something i don't know but that's down the road i'm still waiting on um i just actually met a guy at the beginning of this year um unfortunately the guy i was jamming with last year he basically came up last year we we did a couple uh tracks together and then record this 12 minute long thing that you guys probably heard at the beginning of the stream tonight yeah um, yeah yeah that was just kind of like it was just like 
he started playing, I started drumming. He started playing, I started drumming. So we just continued the whole track, 12 minutes long. But anyways, uh, he was <laughs> like, I don't have time for this. And Nick, I think I reached out to you about this, but I, I started working on Def Leppard because um, I've always oh, been yeah. a huge Def Leppard track. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah on Def Leppard. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah on Def Leppard. Yeah, uh, so I started working on Pour Some Sugar on Me, and uh, the, I, I met... saw him when they had, the drummer had both arms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, always yeah. Yeah. he always says that. He always says that about us. Literally. He, they are phenomenal in concert, even yes, still to are. this day. But uh, Oh, yeah. But it's a funny thing that you talked about, White Snake, is because, like, um, Tony Iommi from Black Sabbath, yeah, when they lost, like, Dio, and they had, like, Ian Gillen, he actually reached out to David Coverdale, who was the singer of White Snake, and he's like, "Well, I got this band. It's called White Snake, and I think we're going to do some stuff." And they did. Right. So he was like, "Okay," but it could have been like he could have just derailed the whole White Snake thing just to do them in Black Sabbath. <laughs> right. that's, that's- now, did you guys hear the original? Since we're on the the same topic here, did you guys hear the original White Snake track? Uh, I don't think so. so. When uh, it first one? came out, I think it was 1982, maybe. And it okay. goes like a hobo. I was born to walk alone. You guys ever heard mm-hmm. that? Verse? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I did. Yeah, okay. I know what you talk about. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure I did. Yeah, yeah, and then all of a sudden they change it. You know, I don't know if everybody mm-hmm. just got offended because you know the cancel culture these days. You know, is, yeah, oh my God. <laughs> well, so, yeah. Um, oh, relics. <laughs> yes, I will definitely be sure to do that. Um, so in the description, once we're done, I'm going to put uh, uh, links to your guys's uh, site and stuff in the description of this video tonight. So uh, he was oh, asking, cool. asking about that. So that that's probably a smart thing for me to do. Appreciate that, relics. Um, is there anything else you guys need to talk about tonight? Uh, I feel like we've covered quite a bit just in a short amount of time. Um, and I don't want to make this too lengthy. I know some people get uh, kind of bored after a little while. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, uh, we, have, um, we have a show coming up. We talked about that. We're working on stuff. Uh, we hibernate in the winter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess a keyboard a player now. Promoter. Yeah, promoter. Yeah. <laughs> Even we're though. fucking fed up and our music's for free man <laughs> yeah yeah get so weird with check us them out. check them out now <laughs> yeah you, you guys have anything just say no um i say it's fed up no i just it's just rock and roll with 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 the guys i i would i wouldn't play music with anybody else if you quit having fun you need to quit doing it that's absolutely right. and right. we've been doing it for a very long time because we have a lot of fun Amen. so yeah, we do if you see a show come out and experience it yourself it's yeah. all about having fun. And, and thank you to uh, Tough Steel Productions, man. Thank you, Jason. Thanks for reaching out. Thanks yeah, for uh, harassing Thanks, me because I know I know I didn't get back to you for a minute. But, yeah, I'm glad you kept on me, man. This this is a good time. Yeah, and I was just trying to I, squeeze I you guys in. I appreciate your time. Yeah, well, I was just trying That's to squeeze complicated. you guys in. Like I said, uh, my wife's been out of town this week, so I was like, this is the perfect time to do it. And <laughs> unfortunately, my calendar it. just really – I don't know mm-hmm. what the hell happened to my calendar, but I had you guys, like, scheduled actually for tonight. But then my calendar went to the end of the month. So. Uh, oh yeah, you were saying that. I was yeah, like, so I you, when I was talking you, to you last night, yeah, I was like, wait a minute, you got me off guard there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so every like, slot possible. Yeah, right. just every Friday. It's set up Friday, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah hell yeah. Yeah, this is cool, and I, I would love to have you guys back on the show again. Um, Absolutely. Know, I'll, I'll keep watching your guys' videos on uh, YouTube that you guys post, and maybe we can have some discussions about about your video content even further, even your songs and stuff like that. But I just wanted people to kind of get a taste of what your guys' music was like, uh, get to know you a little bit more. Uh, I definitely got to know you guys a little bit more because, you know, I've talked to Nick, especially uh, more so on uh, Facebook, and we've gone back and forth messages. So. That's me, baby. Yeah, he's our communication guy. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So it's been really good. Um, I don't even have a Facebook. So. Yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'd rather do away with it, but my family would probably get upset with me if I did. Okay, right? you there. Yeah, how else are we going to promote a band? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my <laughs> wife likes to tag me in pictures, so I have to love those in order to stay in a marriage. So, <laughs> Hey, look. Hey, Jason, take it right. Thank you. I've been looking at your symbol the whole time, but it's all. We're sitting here watching this. Pull pull them up! Pull them up! I want to see them. 
<laughs> but you think about changing your last name to McCloud if you could. McCloud, yeah. Yeah, well, McCloud. Yeah. Actually, that that's what I was called a lot, especially through school. Uh, it was McCloud. Oh. It was McLeod. Um, so yeah, yeah. it was uh, Final yeah. Fantasy VII, man. <laughs> McCloud, yeah, yeah, straight on out. Exactly. Dick, yeah, Dick Highland. Christ. Highland. <laughs> they called yeah. me Dick Christ every day. Yeah, man. Just hey, keep doing Dick it. Keep streaming it, man. I just love it. Yeah. Yeah, we appreciate what you're doing, man. Yeah, appreciate you guys. You guys just hang on for just a moment um, while I finish up the stream. Uh, but I want to thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Uh, meeting fed up. I'm going to post some uh, descriptions of where you can actually find them, uh, their websites, uh, their YouTube account, Facebook account. So they'll be all in the description once I uh, have the moment to actually edit this. So, uh, But thank you guys for tuning in and uh, meeting these guys. Uh, like I said, I saw them back in 2018 and was just astonished at the three band sound. Uh, there's not too many three band sounds that can actually pull it off besides ZZ Top, but um, oh, yeah. <laughs> but these guys can actually do it. So I, I want you guys to be able to check out, you know, their website, uh, their Facebook, and their YouTube. So, uh, but thank you guys for tuning in.